Let's get right at it with our expert power panel. President Trump pleads not guilty to 2020 election charges in the Biden Justice Department's third indictment. Let's bring in former Deputy Assistant Attorney General Tom Dupree, former federal prosecutor Francie Hakes, and attorney and former congressional investigator Sam Dewey. Uh, Dupree, Tom Dupree is going to join us in just a moment. Francie, first to you, what's the biggest weakness in this case? You've said it's loaded with serious legal and constitutional problems. Yeah, Liz, I think the biggest weakness is that every count relies upon the prosecutor being able to prove that Trump was knowingly making these false statements that they say led to a conspiracy. So I think weak link number one is proving that Trump did not believe that he had won the election, that he was knowingly spreading that falsity that the election was rigged, stolen, or otherwise flawed. And I don't think they can prove that. I think Donald Trump honestly believes that he won that election, or he certainly believes that Joe Biden didn't win fair and square. And the fact that people were telling him that doesn't mean anything when you had other people telling him that he was right and he wanted to be right. It's Tom and Sam, sit tight for a second, Francie, but you know, the, the, the special counsel is saying he has Mike Pence's contemporaneous notes. What do you think that will show in terms of Trump's intent and frame of mind? Well, I, I wanna know when in time was that, right? So you've got an awful lot of statements by President Trump over a long time. They filed lots of lawsuits. Um, he got over 70, I think, 7 million votes, 71 million votes, something like that. So it depends on when in time Trump was making those statements. And that could have changed from one day to the next. When you're talking about legal experts, and he had reason to trust Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani and others who certainly at the time were very well-respected lawyers, when they were telling him that there were problems with voting machines or voting rules or signature verifications or Fulton County here where I sit declares that there's a burst pipe and everyone goes home, but then they keep counting without Republican poll watchers. All these things happen in, uh, not in a vacuum and not on one day, but they happen over a period okay. of two months when we learn more and more about the election. So I still think that's the biggest weakness in the special counsel's Tom, case. Tom, what do you think? Because Senator Tom Cotton says the indictment quote, reads like something from an MSNBC producer. Let's put it this let's put it this way. Would this case have been brought, Tom, if the Capitol riots did not, did not happen? We have Democrats questioning the 2000, 2004, and 2016 election results, and Special Counsel Smith is not, is not charging Trump with seditious cons uh, incitement. Yeah, Liz, my sense is they, they probably would have brought this case regardless. Um, I mean, clearly the, the Justice Department and the special counsel made up his mind that even in the events leading up to January 6, in their view, at least there was sufficient evidence of, of criminal conduct to bring these cases. But look, this is going to be a challenging prosecution. This is very different, in my view, than the Mar-a-Lago case, which is more simple. It's more contained. It's about documents, whereas this obviously covers a lot greater uh, span of time. It covers different actors. It's just much more complicated than what they're trying to prove in Florida. So although the prosecutor gets the first say, they get to make allegations. And I, I agree that there are portions of that indictment that do read like a bit of a novel. Um, but ultimately, the special counsel isn't going to prove his case with allegations. He's going to have to prove his case with facts and evidence. And that remains to be seen what he has. Yeah, Sam, what Francie and Tom just said, Sam Dewey, special counsel Smith alleges Trump quote, exploited the violence at the Capitol riot, but he's not charging Trump with seditious uh, conspiracy. It's a, cons it's a conspiracy. Here is Trump now exiting. Uh, he's at Reagan National Airport. He's about to approach the microphone. Let's listen to what Donald Trump has to say. Well, thank you very much. This is a very sad day for America. And it was also very sad driving through Washington, D.C., and seeing the filth and the decay and all of the broken buildings and walls and the graffiti, this is not the place that I left. It's a very sad thing to see it. Uh, when you look at what's happening, this is a persecution of a political opponent. This was never supposed to happen in America. This is the persecution of the person that's leading by very, very substantial numbers in the Republican primary and leading Biden by a lot. So if you can't beat him, you persecute him or you prosecute him. We can't let this happen in America. Thank you very you much, everyone. Do you want these trials to happen before the 2024 election?
question, saying this is a persecution. Uh, Sam Dewey, that was uh, former President Trump just speaking right now uh, on what he says is a, a case that is about persecution. Sam, what's your take on what's going on? What's your take on the allegations in the in the Smith uh, filing? I mean, I'm not going to attribute motive, but the timing is suspect, and the case, it seems to me, is extraordinarily weak because, to take a different version of the question you asked, would this case be brought against any Democrat in a similar situation? The answer appears to be no. Would this case be brought against Stacey Abrams? No. Would this case be brought against those who lobbied for what at the time many thought was an unconstitutional ACA and said, if you like your doctor, you can keep it. Uh, that's a lie and a legal issue. And the answer is no. It seems to be created out of whole cloth for this president. And to the point President Trump just made, that really is concerning because, to my mind, when you pursue a former president, the standard always had been it's got to be just outrageous, clear criminal conduct. And here we have an indictment where the more you talk about it with knowledgeable individuals and experts on the legal issues, the more you're left wondering what are its implications. And I don't even understand how this theory works. I won't understand it until Jack Smith responds to the motion to dismiss. So, and that's extraordinary. So what Sam just said, Francie, coming back to you. Uh, given what Fram, Sam just said, and Tom, what, you, what your perspective has been, your insights here, Francie, what do you think of A.G. Barr saying Trump has free speech rights, but that doesn't give Trump the right to engage in a fraudulent conspiracy? But then you have legal pros saying the Supreme Court already shot that argument down. It made clear that fraud under federal law is a scheme to swindle someone out of money or physical property. So you, more look, you look at this case, Francie, it just seems like it just, it's built on sticks. Well, I think, Liz, that Bill Barr is a very smart man, but I think former President Trump broke him. And I think that he just cannot um, see the forest for the trees here. He's right in the strictest sense. Free speech does not protect you, or the First Amendment does not protect you from a fraudulent conspiracy. But there is no fraudulent conspiracy alleged in this indictment like any other fraudulent conspiracy that has ever existed in the United States government. It simply has never been done before. The statutes that are listed in these four counts have never been used before in the way that they're being used here. So in that sense, it is extraordinary, and it is going to take, I think, the Supreme Court to tell us once and for all whether these statutes can be used in the way that Jack Smith has said. But I don't, I don't agree with Bill Barr. I, I think that President Trump is protected here, generally speaking, by the First Amendment, because I do not see how you can bring criminal charges for the conduct that is described in the indictment. So what Francie just said, Tom, does this go to the Supreme Court? If there is a conviction, you can bet it will go to the Supreme Court. Uh, but look, Liz, I think the way to, to kind of view this whole proceeding is that there really are three paths to victory for former President Trump. One path to victory is he wins the case at trial, that he persuades the jury that he didn't violate the law. That's way number one. Way number two is he might get convicted, but he wins the case on appeal. That's the scenario that we were just talking about, where the case goes up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court says that Jack Smith has overread the fraud statute and that it doesn't apply to this conduct or that it's protected by the First Amendment. That's way number two. Way number three, of course, would be President Trump wins the election before there's any conviction. And then on his first day in office, he directs the Justice Department to dismiss the case. So there's a lot of different ways yeah. this can play out, but all of them ultimately will depend on the strength of Jack Smith's legal theory. Yeah, Trump saying just moments ago, we showed uh, former President Trump speaking on the tarmac. It is a sad day for America. You know, Sam, where do you come down? I mean, the government has a burden of proving beyond a reasonable doubt this intent to defraud uh, that special counsel Smith is bringing, that Trump actually knew he lost the election but went ahead anyway, you know, with this, uh, th this uh, indictment charge that he built a, a slate of fake electors in seven battleground states. Your take on that, Sam? Well, two points on that. The first I would say is I actually think there's a four, uh, fourth way that Trump can win, which is that regardless of the disposition of his motion to dismiss, I think it's probably very well going to end up being immediately appealable. 
because I think he's going to assert official immunity, because Jack Smith has charged, among other things, his official control and conduct of senior-level subordinates at the Department of Justice. So he has charged President Trump in relation to an official act taken as president, not something said as a candidate on the trail, an official act in the Oval Office. And if you want to do that, there are all sorts of constitutional immunity implications. So I think that's a fourth option. And it's a way to get to the Supreme Court before you get to trial. On the broader point, before you even get to the evidence, I think most of these charges probably fall because, one, to this day, everybody had understood if you're lobbying, you can lie. You can, or you can say something you don't believe, but that the person that you are lobbying might believe. That's just how this town has worked since before Washington, D.C., you know, was the capital. That is how the capital worked when it was in okay. Philadelphia. That was just the fact. So it's just a bizarre legal theory there. And then finally, I'd say I'm not so sure the electors were fraudulent. I'm not so sure. Uh, asserting Pence had power was fraudulent or wrong, uh, there were colorable legal arguments for that. And how is it fraudulent or wrong? What is the, what is the improper purpose that is being pursued uh, if you are asking someone to exercise an official power they have? Mm -hmm. I think that's an issue, too. You know, uh, what Sam just said, Francie, coming back to you, President Biden has his own corruption scandals. Uh, we've got, uh, we're going to talk in just a moment about the official transcript of Biden insider Devin Archer's testimony released. We're going to get to that in just a moment. You know, Biden already talked last November about using the Constitution to stop Trump from becoming president again. And the New York, New York Times in March reported Biden, quote, told confidence people that he was close to that he wanted Attorney General Merrick Garland to stop acting like a ponderous judge and take decisive action and prosecute Trump over January 6th. That's what Biden is saying behind the scenes, Francie Hakes. Well, he, he's obviously gotten what he wanted. I mean, Merrick Garland has done exactly what a good consigliere does, and he is acting to protect his boss's left, right, and center flanks. But I think what we have here, Liz, too, is an extraordinary charge that's based on making false statements, right? So that's what Jack Smith is saying, that President Trump made false statements and it obstructed an official proceeding and it was a conspiracy. I prosecuted thousands of cases in my career as a prosecutor at the state and federal levels. And I have to tell you that in every courtroom I ever walked in, someone was lying and it obstructed an official proceeding. I mean... What? Where was it going to stop? Are you going to start charging defense attorneys for lying or putting their client knowingly on the stand when they're lying and perpetrating a fraud on the court? No, these are things that happen. Everyone understands that they happen, and everyone understands that politicians might not tell the truth. But again, I go back to President Trump's, I think, strongest single defense, which is going to take a whole lot of months and a lot of investigation and a lot of subpoenas and a lot of witnesses. Okay. And that is, there were election irregularities in 2020. Now, maybe it wasn't, as the special counsel liked to say so much in the indictment, outcome determinative. That remains to be seen. That's really never been proven one way or the other. But if there were election irregularities, any at all, in any of the states, then the case of the special counsel crumbles into the quicksand. Really because interesting. Because it cannot stand on those legs. Interesting stuff. Francie Hakes, Tom Dupree, Sam Dewey.